Senator James Moylan and Mayor's Council President Jesse Alec today. Here's more. The media was allowed to listen in and ask questions after the. Mary Rhodes asked government officials to provide a much needed lifeline of local and federal support to the Protehi Eat Lilatlata program. Organizers are seeking some $75 million in grants to benefit a wide range of businesses from travel agents to optional hours. Here is Governor Lou Leon Guerrero's response. I will be very supportive of any kind of push or investment into the tourism that uh, allows and solidifies employee of people, the employment. Uh, and to making sure our workforce is supported and maintained and sustained. So I don't know about the amount, but I am already in discussions with Gita and our senators to uh, figure out some options to help out our local businesses uh, around tourism. The group is also seeking support from Congressman San Nicolas for additional federal funding programs for Guam. Meanwhile, there was no sugarcoating of the tourism stats when GVB officials appeared at the legislature for an informational briefing today. Officials say a survey of regional and global expectations predict that pre-COVID tourism levels are at least a couple of years away. GVB Vice President Jerry Perez says their in-country survey of key source markets shows that a significant percentage of people won't travel outside their country until the pandemic is over. In Japan, it was 73%, Taiwan 52 and Korea 43 Paris also discussed Guam's projected arrivals for fiscal year 2022. We think conservatively 85,000 next year, and we believe that 130,000 is achievable. This compares differently from a lot of the feedback we're getting from the industry. But again, uh, we're still trying to plan for, or rather, um, plan for the worst case while we, um, you know, manage our limited budget. For perspective, 130,000 arrivals was a good month pre-pandemic. Last fiscal year, we saw just over 60,000 visitors. GVB officials also talked about the three initiatives that they're focused on, scaling up vaccinations, continuing to prepare Guam as a destination for the eventual recovery, and coming up with an effective communication strategy to promote tourism to the local community and our source markets. Today was the deadline to file for the advanced child tax credit. Revan Tax has launched the child tax credit portal at its website, myguamtax.com. This Friday is the deadline to update information on the portal, or you can still do so manually. Two of the five installments have been paid out. The next payment will be on October 15, November 15, and December 15. To date, DRT has processed over 31,000 advanced CTC payments worth nearly $17 million. Meanwhile, Revan Tax announced that its online driver's license and Guam ID services also launched today. Both can now be renewed or replaced through the DRT website. A father and daughter are calling into question claims they were compensated for the land the governor wants to build a billion dollar health care complex on and they saw they haven't received a penny. Here's more. I have not gotten any response from the original landowners, but my research says um, that the owners of that property have already been compensated. Governor Lou Leon Guerrero on KUAM last week talking about military land in Mangilao at Eagles Field she wants to use to build a new billion dollar health care complex. And while the governor said original landowners of the property have all been compensated for lands that were taken by the federal government, at least one original landowner and his heir beg to differ. For them to say on TV that they compensated my father, come off now. When you said that it was compensated first, show me that piece of paper, receipt or whatever, the check, whatever that you compensated him, show me that proof. Right here is the, the original landowner. If there was compensated, he would have got me, but he told you he didn't get it. Elsie Flores' father, 91-year-old Henry Tenorio Flores, tells KUAM lot 2517-BA, is situated a little bit behind Eagles Field. He tells us the land 
had been in his family for generations. My dad died, you see, and before he died, I was given this land. Mr. Flores is one of 18 possible original landowners and heirs of the land the governor plans to use for a new hospital via a license that she says will be given to her by the military by December. The Air Force was wrong to give it back to the government bond, and the government was wrong to keep it. As father and daughter poured over maps, they talked about how much land Mr. Flores' family had owned in the area. But the promise of property dwindled over the years. Mr. Flores telling us he was swindled out of whatever land he had left after federal land takings. His daughter summing up the irony of the only land Mr. Flores now has. We have to live on a land trust because we don't have land because they don't want to give us maybe half of that. But we have to get land trust for him to build. If you know his income, I don't, I don't want to say because he doesn't authorize him yet to say it. You won't believe it. Mr. Flores and his daughter are both fighting cancer, and Elsie says although the governor's words stung as they watched them, they're open to reaching a solution, if it's fair to them. If the price is right. The price is right. <laughs> because his age already, let him enjoy himself. And as for the governor's billion-dollar health center project, Elsie says Guam does need a new hospital, but not like this. There's better ways and there's better places. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. With Guam now 89% vaccinated, what is public health doing to help ease the island's COVID numbers? Here's more on this report with KUAM's Daniel Perez. In order to mitigate infection rates, public health PIO Janela Carrera told KUAM how manpower and resources are being used to fight the virus. The one thing that we are, you know, always constantly, constantly analyzing and assessing um, is how to ensure that we're maximizing our resources. There may be days where um, Micronesian Mall might be slower and, uh, you know, UOG clinics um, might be slower. So we want to make sure that if there are days that are slow but might be busy in other areas, perhaps we may need to cut down on hours in certain location or certain days and put those resources elsewhere where we see greater demand. One of those COVID mitigation measures are the village booster clinics. Yesterday at the Senahanya mayor's office, 92 Pfizer booster shots were given to the elderly that wanted to take it. With the uh, Agani Heights and Haganya and then Senahanya, even those three villages combined, um, it's still a small village, but for a high turnout for booster shots. As for the infusion center in Mangilao, 244 treatments have been administered from September 23 to October 11th. We do keep track of the utilization rate and report these numbers, uh, not just with the monoclonal antibody treatment center at, in Mangilao, but also the utilization rate uh, at the two hospitals where they're being offered as well. Um, and so what we do is we report that as, at, at a central database uh, so that we can continue to request for more courses, more doses, um, and offer them to our citizens. Carrera confirmed that vaccinations at both the Micronesia Mall and UOG Fieldhouse are still seeing a steady stream of residents getting the shot. Public Health continues to urge island residents to get tested if they aren't feeling well and if they are eligible to take the Pfizer booster shot. Daniel Perez reporting for Guam's News Network. Thanks, Daniel. A memorial service is being planned for 23-year-old Jaron Wellbacker. He was pronounced dead at the Guam Memorial Hospital Authority following an altercation outside of a local restaurant in Timuning early Saturday morning. Timuning Mayor Louise Rivera says since word of Jaron Wellbacker's passing, she's been inundated with phone calls. I just want, um, you know, everyone to know, you know, this is a very sad and um, tragic situation and so many people have reached out, have called in because, you know, um, they, the, the name, they, they found out, you know, they heard about it. So, you know, they're asking questions on where they can go to meet the family. Um, you know, uh, a lot of the classmates and team players, you know, have reached out to us, um, you know, on, um, you know, trying to get a hold of the parents to, you know, to offer their condolences. Mayor Rivera has known Jaron since he was a child. 
Jaron um, played um, in our little league team um, baseball, and um, he was also playing basketball in our gym. You know, with um, you know different teams, and so you know we watched him grow up throughout the years, along with his siblings and then his parents. Um, they're they're a wonderful family. Um, I met with the mom and dad yesterday, uh, and. Um, and was talking to them about um, putting together a memorial or somewhere that um, they can have, um, you know, a meeting place for all the people that have loved him and are, you know, wanting to come together. The mayor says um, they're still working on a date you know, and a venue, a but once everything is finalized, she will let the community know. As we reported, arrested was 31-year-old Fiatiga Luia Aki, 22-year-old John Maliaga, and 36-year-old Joseph Decady. Maliaga was charged with aggravated assault and assault, while Aki was charged with just assault. Decady was booked and released for criminal facilitation. Following a magistrate's hearing on Monday, Maliaga is being held on a $25,000 cash bail, while Aki was released on a 2000 personal recognizance bond. They're scheduled to appear before presiding Judge Alberto Lamarena on October 21st for a preliminary hearing. Additionally, an autopsy is pending, which could potentially lead to additional charges. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Tyler Matanani. In Superior Court today, 23-year-old murder defendant Nicholas Wayne Moore was arraigned for a separate case. He was charged with two counts of criminal sexual conduct for having sex with a minor under the age of 16 around December 2016 and January 2017. Moore, who is currently on house arrest, was held on a personal reconnaissance bond of $20,000 along with the existing conditions from his two other cases. Back in July, Moore, along with Troy Ray Ryan Damion, was charged with the murder of Michael Castro, who was reported missing in October 2020. Moore was also indicted in a separate incident also in October involving a man drive-by shooting incident in Agania Heights. He has pled not guilty in those two cases. Once again, we invite you to voice your view on our social media with our daily question. As we reported, senators recently held a public hearing on legislation that makes a series of changes to certain deadline and procedures. One changes to move the primary from the last Saturday in August to the first. Do you support this? Why or why not? We'll share your responses on the link tomorrow morning. And stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. 100% truck, 100% Jeep. Experience next level off-roading on your new Jeep Gladiator. The most capable off-road mid-size pickup truck crafted for adventure. Equipped with best-in-class towing capacity. Legendary 4x4 Jeep capability. And backed by Guam's only lifetime powertrain warranty. Drive home in a 2021 Jeep Gladiator today. Starting as low as $315 per paycheck during Jeep Adventure Days. Visit CarsPlusGuam.com to get pre-approved online today. Terms and conditions apply. Cars Plus. Driven by you. Don't need to work, babe. Keep the smile on your face. The moments you can't replay, and I'll be around. Wherever life takes you, we're always here for you. Calvo's Insurance. Count on us for life. When making the new Kentucky Fried Chicken sandwich, people asked how I felt about burger places selling fried chicken. I'd say that's none of my business. Just like making fried chicken is none of theirs. Get the new Kentucky Fried Chicken sandwich. It's finger licking good. It's a special delivery to your inbox every week with your KUAM News Roundup, program advisories, and promotions. Sign up for the weekly KUAM Digital Digest today on KUAM.com. Welcome back. The Ethics Commission is seeking authorization to hire independent legal services on a limited basis. In a public hearing Monday, Commission Executive Director JC, Jesse Kanga said the independent counsel would help adjudicate complaints and support the operation of ethics hearings. He says their enabled statute provides two options for legal representation. They can use the Attorney so General's the, office um, or hire a full-time staff attorney. In the drive, which is still reading December. First option presented a conflict of interest challenge particularly if um, and if there would be officials of the OAG uh, that is subject to an ethics related complaint. The second option is estimated to cost the commission anywhere between $70,000 
to $120,000 annually, inclusive of benefits. The Commission's FY22 appropriation is not sufficient to support this estimated cost. Kenga says that's why they prefer the use of as-needed legal services. The commission researched the cost in assuming 10 hours of work a month at $200 an hour. They'd have sufficient funds in the current budget. In anticipation of millions heading into Guam as part of a nationwide settlement against several pharmaceutical companies, the public hearing was held on Bill 204 to create an opioid recovery trust fund. With more, here's Hannah Devonzo. With upwards of 10 million heading to Guam to combat opioid abuse, during a public hearing on the Opioid Prevention and Treatment Act, author Senator Amanda Shelton provided the numbers behind the growing problem. According to data from Public Health Prescription Drug Monitoring Program, there were over 97,821 opioid prescriptions dispensed in Guam from 2015 to 2019. A study on the impact of opioids in the U.S. territories published in 2019 cites that the distribution of 10 kinds of opioids in Guam steadily rose from 2006, reaching a peak of 140 percent increase in 2013. And according to the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration, this peak in 2013 amounts to 4,372 grams of oxycodone distributed in Guam, equivalent to 2,450 grams per 100,000 individuals. These numbers may be very technical to many of us, but they all tell us one thing, that unfortunately, Guam was not spared from the opioid epidemic. It Bill 204 would create an opioid recovery trust fund, which would be monitored by an advisory council comprised of government partners, community stakeholders, and individuals with first-hand knowledge of the effects of the opioid crisis. The council will come up with a spending strategy on how best to use these settlement funds. Guam has already received $230,000 as part of the settlement, but more payments are expected in April of 2022. Reporting for Guam News Network, I'm Hannah Devonzo. The Department of Public Health and Social Services continues to receive schools' COVID-19 screening testing plan. Although October 1st was the deadline for all Guam schools to submit their plans to DPHSS on how they will begin random COVID testing on campus, Public Health Public Information Officer Janela Carrera says schools are still turning in their plan of action. We are continuing to receive um, the submissions from the schools and we are conducting um, inspections and we're going out to the schools and doing visits. According to public health guidance, the plan must have a goal of randomly testing 10% of the student population in the first 90 days of implementation. It is required by the governor as an added layer of protection as students return to campuses for in-person instruction. As we reported, the Guam Department of Education's first phase of their plan has been approved, which deals with unvaccinated employees. GDOE intends to present the plans to stakeholders first before implementing it. Carrera didn't detail whether or not schools have been disapproved so far. Today in the heart of Hagania, Arbor Day was celebrated with stakeholders and members of the community. KUM's Hannah Devonzo has this report. To many people across the nation, Arbor Day is a day dedicated to planting trees. Here on Guam, it's much more personal. Forestry Chief Christine Farron. The significance for Arbor Day, I'll say from, from the forestry perspective, is the recognition of our native trees. Recognition that a tree is more valuable than a blank space. So preserving our green spaces on Guam, meaning trees, native trees, fruiting trees, trees that can give back to our community. While trees can help with providing shade, oxygen, and fruit bearing, they also reduce flooding. Remove that one tree and suddenly you have ponding taking place during your first rainstorm. I want community members to think about that one tree that they had on their street and the minute that tree was removed, what happened on the next rain event. In order to take care of our island's trees, members of the community involvement can play an integral part. Be respectful of our trees. I mean, <laughs> don't hang your beach bags off of the trees at the beach. Bring your mat, lay them down on your guafet, and leave your things there. The, give the trees the, the room they need to grow. If you see a tree, work around the tree. And remember, harvest the fruit, don't cut the tree to reach the fruit. So. Just be, be mindful of the green space that you have because once it's gone, it's going to take another 10, 15, 25 plus years to even reach the capacity of shade that the current tree is giving you. Follow doag.forestry on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter and post a picture of your favorite tree in your village 
sharing your forestry experience in hashtag Arbor Day GU 2021, where you'll have the opportunity to win a free native tree. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Hannah Devonzo. Thanks, Hannah. California Pizza Kitchen opened its doors this morning in Hagania for dine-in. After only offering takeout and curbside services for five months, CPK General Manager Debbie Edding says their team is ready to serve the, their menu to the community. We feel very excited. At the same time, we're very nervous, of course. Uh, but uh, we're already here, so we want everybody to... Um, you know, support us. We just wanted to invite everybody to come down to California Pizza Kitchen in Haganya. We're finally open and we're very excited to open our doors to our um, um, regular guests. The restaurant is known for its pizzas, pastas and salads, but Assistant, uh, Assistant General Manager Carl Chrysostomo explained that there's more to what residents can expect. A warm atmosphere, great environment and uh, uh, a taste of California flavors here on the island. The new branch is located across from Skinner's Plaza and its hours of operations are from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily. CPK Haganya hosted a job fair mid-September and had over 80 applicants. They hired roughly 30 to 40 new people. The theme for Relay for Life of Guam 2021 is Alan Strong, Together We Beat Cancer. For the month of October, we will be highlighting some of the teams who are raising funds that go towards research, education, advocacy, and health equity. Tonight, we feature Team FEDS. Relay for Life 2021 Team Profiles, Island Strong, Together We Beat Cancer. Rose Clark is a breast cancer survivor, and May Bloss is a two-time breast cancer survivor. Both are members of Team Feds. In 2003, May was diagnosed with breast cancer, so, so the following year we decided to uh, join Relay for Life. So here we are, we're celebrating 18 years uh, this year. Team Feds was created in 2004. Clark is currently team captain, and Bloss has previously served as captain. We started out with a small group, now we're kind of expanding. And before it was called Team Feds because it was mostly federal employees and, and our law enforcement counterparts on the local side. The team now includes family and friends who want to fight for the cause. Clark says for the past several years, the team's fundraising goal has been $10,000. For the last several years, we've really met that and sometimes we exceed the 10,000. But you know, since COVID, COVID has changed how we fundraise. So it was, it's really hard. Like many of the teams this year, they have had to come up with creative and safe ways to fundraise. And despite such a challenge, Team Feds continues to move forward, keeping in mind this year's theme, Island Strong, Together We Be Cancer. Our island should get together, be strong and, and still continue to fight for for our, um, to raise funds for our cancer survivor. Um, you know, we need to encourage each other to, to have, or especially our women, friends, and um, family to, to get their mammograms done. Because with, for me, that's where I was able to get my breast cancer detected was through my mammograms, both, both times that I had breast cancer. And because of the early detection, you know, I was able to survive the first one 18 years and this one I've already survived two years. Clark ends with a message to the community. I also would like to to encourage people to, to you know, donate to American Cancer Society. You know, American Cancer Society does save lives. So, so uh, and you know, they, they do, uh, the donations that we make help people, you know, the ones that have been affected on island. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> It's something like for me personally, because I am now a caregiver for my husband. So, so research is, is really important. Relay for Life 2021 team profiles, Island Strong. Together, we beat cancer. Sports is up next with Dave Delgado and still to come, your Coach Stone Creamery birthday shout outs. Keep it here, you're watching KUAM.
your community calendars. Brought to you by Taco Bell. Whether it's your first meal or your fourth meal, we've got you covered. Taco Bell, live moss. Do you ever wonder how your favorite products make their way into your local stores? Most arrive on state-of-the-art mats and vessels that transport containers of food, household items, equipment, and supplies into the islands every week. Because we know that you depend on us, we work closely with our partners to ensure that our shipments arrive on time, all the time, so you can find your favorite products when you need them. We transport the region's most precious cargo that supports successful businesses and promotes a better quality of life for our families. Matson is proud to have been the hometown shipping carrier for Guam, the CNMI, and Micronesia for the past 25 years. And you can count on us to be here for generations to come. Taco Bell is so good and so cheap. I know, right? I wonder why. What if? They know we're broke. What if they're trying to be the good guys? Ah. Thanks, Taco Bell! Half a day. Hi. That will be $20, please. I forgot my mobile Smiles driver's rewards card. No worries. You can now use your registered mobile number to earn points. Can I use my mobile number to redeem rewards? Sure. Just show us your photo ID or driver's license. That's easy. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. In double I, double AG girls volleyball, the St. John's Knights improved to 2 0 on the season. The Knights beat the defending champions, Academy Cougars, in four sets 25 20, 19 25, 25 21, 25 23. Jaden Palomares puts down the shot here on the right side of Academy's defense. After dropping the second set, it was all Knights in the third and fourth, trailing 11 to six in the third. The visiting squad scored eight unanswered points to lead 14-11. Wendy Zhang and Sydney Fernandez came up with some good plays to help close out the set. The fourth set went back and forth with Academy going on some short runs. St. John's led 22 to 19. The Cougars battled and scored three straight points to tie the set at 22. Zhang put the Knights ahead 24-23 as they went on to take the win and stay undefeated. <laughs> Turning over to some soccer, the Father Duenas Friars beat the defending AAAG boys soccer champions, St. John's 2-0 at the GFA field. FD's Daniel Glasscock scored the first goal of the match in the 49th minute of play. Glasscock with the left-footed shot, getting it to go past the Knights keeper. Teammate Bobby Haddock put one through in the 60th minute. The Friars defense did the rest of the work, keeping the ball on the Knights side of the field. FD is 2-0 on the season. Their first win was a huge shutout over Notre Dame, 18-0. FD will have a bye tomorrow, and will take to the field on Saturday to face the Harvest Christian Academy Eagles at the GFA field at 10.30 in the morning. St. John's will play Harvest tomorrow at Harvest at 4.30. Keep it with soccer news, Aria Cruz and Colleen Naden were named captain and vice captain of the Masakata respectively by head coach Ross Awa for Guam's monumental return to the AFC Women's Asian Cup tournament after an 18-year hiatus. I was set to release his final roster later this week for the AFC Women's Asian Cup India 2022 qualifiers. Guam was drawn into Group D of the tournament and will kick off its campaign on October 18th against United Arab Emirates. The team next plays against Myanmar on October 21st before finishing out the qualification round against Lebanon on October 24th. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. You are everything that matters to me. And I promise to do whatever it takes to keep you healthy, to be comfortable, 
and to be free. I love you. As long as we are together, I'll always make sure that home will always be our best place to breathe. Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist. Over 20 years of experience. We've made a lot of breakfasts, and along the way, we noticed something was missing. A warm cinnamon roll for breakfast, or with breakfast. A fluffy blueberry muffin from the drive through you're already driving through. A glazed apple fritter, which might find its way into your coffee. These are options every breakfast haver should have, and now they do. Meet the new bakery sweets at McDonald's. ba da ba ba, -ba. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of the birthday shout-outs from the Coast Zone Creamery Birthday Club. Happy birthday on this Tuesday, October 12th, to Paula San Agustin, who celebrates birthday number 81 today. Happy birthday from all of us at KUM, and to a very, very wonderful mom, grandma, and great-grandma. Birthday blessings from your family, and they all say, we love you. Happy birthday, Miss Paulina. Irene Ramos, happy birthday to you and to my beautiful wife, your shout-out says, I love you to the moon and back, says your loving husband, Joe. Also, mom and dad and the family send it their love. Maria Cruz, happy blessed birthday number 43 to Maria, a.k.a. Ria. We love and miss you. Ginin idze familiamu islan guahan. Happy birthday to you. Jennifer Ann Cruz, happy birthday to you and hope you enjoy your special day with lots of love. Say John Roy and Naya Lay, mom and grandpa. And belated birthday wishes going out to Jenna Elise, Leon Guerrero, Antelan who celebrates birthday 26 this year. You've been everything we've hoped for. You're everything we need. You are so beautiful to us. We love you, Mommy. God bless you, and may you, may you have the best birthday. Love, Dre, Drew, and the whole family. And also, Keith Torres celebrates birthday number 39. That's a lot of candles, man. Keith, happy birthday to you, your family, friends, and all of us at KUM and Coldstone Creamery. Hope you have a safe and wonderful and blessed day. To everybody who had a birthday on October 12th, we celebrate you. Remember, you can be a part of the Coat Stone Creamery Birthday Club by registering online at KOM.com. Please make sure to include with your photo, your name, and birthday. That's going to do it for us here on Primetime. Guahusia Isaiah Uggen. Thanks for watching. Good night and stay safe.